family. Let's worship. All of creation, all of the earth, make straight a highway path for the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. Call back the sinner, wake up the saints. Let every nation shout at your fame. Jesus is coming soon. Like a bride waiting for a groom. Will be a church ready for you. Every heart longing for our King. We sing, even so come, Lord Jesus, come. Even so come, Lord Jesus, come. There will be justice, all will be new. Your name forever, faithful and true. Jesus is coming soon. Like a bride waiting for her groom, will be a church waiting for you. Every heart longing for our King, we sing, even so come, Lord Jesus, come, even so come, Lord Jesus, come, so we wait, we wait for you. God, we wait your coming soon. So we wait, we wait for you. God, we wait your coming soon. Like a bride waiting for a church ready for you every heart longing for a king we sing like a bride waiting for her groom will be church ready for you every heart longing for a king we sing even so come Lord Jesus, come, even so come, Lord Jesus, come, even so come, Lord Jesus, come, even so come, Lord Jesus, come. your name the mountains shake and crumble at your name the oceans roar and tumble at your name angels will bow the earth will rejoice your people cry out, Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise, Yahweh, Yahweh, 
We love to shout your name, oh Lord. And your name, the morning breaks in glory. At your name, creation sings your story. At your name, Angels will bow, the earth will rejoice, your people cry out. Lord of all the earth, shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise, Yahweh, Yahweh. We love to shout your name, oh Lord. Cause there's no one like our God, we will praise you, praise you. There's no one like our God, we will sing, we will sing. There is no one like our God, we will praise you, praise you. There's no one like our God, we will sing, we will sing. There is no one like our God, we will praise you, praise you. Jesus, you are God. We will sing, Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, we shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise, Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with Endless praise, endless praise, Yahweh, Yahweh. We love to shout your name, oh Lord. Shout your name, oh Lord. Yahweh, Yahweh. We love to shout your name, Lord of all the earth. We shout your name, shout your name. Filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord. Well, good evening, folks, and welcome to Refuge and our Tuesday night One Sure Way Bible study. We are so glad that you're here. We actually have a special guest for you tonight. Uh, his name is Jake Pinner, and so we are excited to not only interview him and, and find out a little bit more about him, but for you to find out a little bit more about him as well, because we love what we know about James, and he goes by James sometimes, a.k.a. Jake. But uh, he will be here with Pastor Howard, and they're going to go ahead and do a little bit of an interview and a testimony. And uh, I do pray that you will be blessed. And I know we were honored. Uh, we're honored to have him here tonight. So one of the things we just want to remind you of, if you were here with us on Sunday, Sonia and I made our announcements, and it was pretty detailed when it comes to the men and the women's Bible studies on Thursday night. Women, you're at 630. Men at 7 o'clock. We meet at the same place, the same address, separate rooms. All that we've asked you to do is just to let us know, because being that we are here face-to-face, -face, we need to make sure we can accommodate you. Obviously, you see a different space here that we opened up just so we can do some filming today uh, and tonight for you just to give you something a little fresh and new so we do have the space we just need to know how do we prepare for you so please let us know now please if for some reason you cannot make it face to face or not it's just not a comfortable situation for you at this time we are zooming in where the guys and the girls you guys can all see each other when you're on, in your separate meeting so make sure men you pick the one for the men women you pick the one on the right for the ladies and we'll go ahead and we'll zoom in on those times, 6.30 and 7 again, like I said, on Thursday night. The next thing we have coming up uh, where we can actually get together will be telephonically via prayer uh, over the phone on Saturday at 9 o'clock. Well, like we've said and we've talked to you uh, numerous times uh, that it is a really wonderful time uh, to not feel so alone and isolated. It's what really fills you in on what's going on outside of your world, like outside of your own head and your own thoughts, and it brings you back down to where you go, ah, you know, it kind of centers you. And so I know it does that for me and the testimony of a lot of other people that are involved 
just love it for that very reason, if nothing else. But we do want to invite you out for that. And the number will be listed on Facebook where you can get the code to, to go ahead and chime in with us. And then we just want to remind you at the end of the month, just to make notes and mark your calendars. Men, you have a men's breakfast over at Johnny Barron's house. Like Sonia said, it's a world renowned chef that happens to be a friend that wants to come bless. He wants to come make sure that you guys are taken care of. He, he does want to come and hear the word and spend time with friends. Some of you have met him possibly but I know that he's going to have a real treat for you guys. That happens at the end of the month. I think they meet early in the morning. We'll run that time by you uh, before we get to that date. And you know what? The same week on that Friday night, if for some reason you can't make it to the men's breakfast, we have a couple social the night before. We're hoping you can do both, but at the couple social, we're doing skill building exercises. And so a lot of it is just uh, partnering up with your with your spouse, your in, your significant other, not the insignificant one. We we don't do that. <laughs> we don't do that at couples group. It, it doesn't ever work out. So there's significant people, our partners. So this is what we do to come together and just have a fun time. We'll have a menu. It'll be at the Andersons, which would be my home, Pastor Howard as well. We'd love to have you again. We just want you to make note because we are going to have to figure out how to accommodate those that want to be there. But regardless, we are super excited about. That. And then finally, it's something we've been talking about where we can get together collectively in a larger format with more pay people and faces around, kind of like we did down at the beach. But I think this might be even more special, being that it's a Sunday. It's a day that you've already put aside. You don't have work or for the most part or anything going on. You already set this time aside for church. So what you can do is grab your chairs, your coffee, your breakfast and some breadcrumbs for the kids, kiddos and for those big kiddos. If you wanna go feed the ducks later after the study, I think it'll be a, a fantastic time. The weather should be uh, excellent for that, but we're hoping uh, like we've been saying, to be able to do this every month, at least up and through the holidays so that we can actually get that connection. And we do want you to stay tuned because we do have some wonderful things in store for you when it comes to the things that we can do here at the Hub uh, and here at the Loft for Refuge when it comes to uh, getting more people involved. If you are someone that would love to be a part of what's going on. Don't think that we're limited or that you're limited. We would love to have you be a part. If it means to set up, break down, lighting, audio, you know, whatever it is, even hospitality when we have guests here. It is so awesome to be able to just grab our special guests, that coffee, the water, whatever it is that we need. And so we want to put that out there for volunteers. If you'd like to be involved, let us know and we'll hook you up honestly. And, and one more thing, just so you guys know, we have daily breads that should get you through the next couple of months, small print, large print. We have free Bibles. They're not paperback, they're hardbound and they were donated. They're beautiful. And then we have um, some used Bibles. If you're someone that would like to hand them out, if you go out witnessing, doing whatever, we have all these materials here for you uh, in abundance. They've been uh, donated to, for us to go ahead and hand out and there's no reason for us to hang on to them. So if you'd like to be a part of a team that goes out and hands out Bibles, blankets, whatever it is that we do coming up, mark your calendars, uh, put that thought in your brain and start thinking about it. See how you and your family can get involved here at Refuge. And before we go, we can't forget, we have some special birthday girls. We have Margaret who had her birthday um, last week, I believe, and we're a little bit late celebrating. We did kind of sing to her, but we're going to go ahead and do it up and I'm not going to do it alone. And then also Dawn, Dawn, it's your birthday. I'm not even going to say your last name just in case. Should I? I don't know. But Pastor Howard is going to join me. So we're going to sing happy birthday um, to you special ladies. And if there's anyone else out there, I know Ashley, you have nine years clean and sober, I think as of sometime this weekend. So we just want to make sure that you're not forgotten, that you don't think we've forgotten about you. And no. now Howard can sing to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday to, to you, y'all. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jesus loves you more than you'll ever know. Happy birthday to you. We love you. God bless you. Okay, James Pinner tonight. This is so cool. I am so honored and blessed that we could have this time. And you would be willing to do it because sometimes when you're unfolding your life for people, it could be a a bit weird and, and uncomfortable. Now, uh, let me just ask, start off by asking, how long have we been working together? It's, uh, it's coming on four and a half. It's going to be five years it's here gonna pretty soon. going to be five years, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, and how old are you today? 26. 26. So when you were 21, uh, that's when we 
we met. Just we about met. that time, yeah, maybe closer to 22, but yeah. Yeah, so we've been working together. You've been doing, well, tell us what you've been doing for uh, Refuge. Uh, so, the years. <laughs> so when it started, when we were uh, when we were at the uh, Samoan Church, uh, I just helped bring in the equipment and set up the stage. Uh, it quickly turned into uh, helping out with the sound in the back and and with Mario. I just I learned so much that I just started really enjoying myself serving with you guys and and just see, being a part of Refuge. It, it yeah. really has become uh, an integral part of my life, and it just it's I wouldn't I wouldn't change that. It's been amazing. Now, it's been kind of a weird journey that brought you to Refuge. So I, I want to back up a little bit. Um, I want to take a second and kind of talk about your story. Um, let's talk about, I learned something about you just a few moments ago. We were just talking about some things. Where were you born? I was born in Encinitas, uh, at Scripps Encinitas. I was actually one of the, the first hundred babies born at uh -huh. the, the new, what well, was new then, the new maternal ward at, at Encinitas Scripps. Uh, that was pretty cool. Um, spent a few years uh, in Encinitas, but then ended up in Escondido and actually spent most of my uh, years growing up in Escondido, just in various various places. Wow. And then our connection started with your dad, didn't it? It did. Yeah. Uh, my dad was attending refuge um, for as long as, as I remember, really, probably last eight years um yeah. he uh he was always trying to get me to go for a really long time and uh there's a few there was probably a year and a half before i started actually uh, attending and serving with you guys mm -hmm. uh, i would attend very infrequently uh -huh. uh, but i was always impressed you know it was always cool to come in and hear you play yeah. uh but i was never I was never drawn in to the to the extent that i am now just because of where i was in my life and and mm -hmm. the uh, my willingness to accept the Lord, mm. was, you know, I just wasn't there yet. And uh, it was cool to have that to fall back on when I was ready. Sure. You know? Well, here's, here's the $10,000 question. Uh, your dad is trying to talk you into going. Now, commonly, when I have a mother or a father, you know, a, a parent trying to talk one of their kids into going to certainly like a church like ours, um, and we, we tend to be a, not as formal as a lot of other churches uh, in our liturgy and all, but when a parent asks their kid, you know, you should come to church, there's usually something going on behind the scenes oh, absolutely. <laughs> that <laughs> absolutely inspires that question. Oh, so, yeah. so just lead me in, because you know, we don't need to know what happened in grade school, but <laughs> certainly lead me into what might have been concerning uh, your mom and dad at a time like that. So... To answer that question, I'll, I'll start off by saying, you know, I kind of, I kind of grew up in in the rooms of AA. Uh, right. I, I was really familiar with um, AA and what they were all about, just because of my parents and and coming in and out as a child, just watching right. these these people. And I remember thinking to myself as a kid, like, man, how do people get this messed up? Right. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> wow. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't until I was older and I started started drinking and and you know doing some other things and uh it, it came became pretty clear to me you know it, it it was out of my control at that point and it was like wow you know it, it gets so out of hand so fast and and it's 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 something that that if you can get if you can get control of it it feels empowering right you know just right. just the fact that you feel like you have some kind of control over your life is, is empowering, especially right. when you've gone so long without that, that control. Right. Um, but to answer that question, I'd say I was, I was drinking way too much. Right. You know, as a, as a, right. as an 18, 19 year old kid, you shouldn't be drinking every day. You know, it's right. not, it's not healthy. It's right. not, not normal. Um, but it's surprising up, how quickly things can spin out of control. Isn't it, it? it absolutely is. It was, yeah. it, it was, um, but it was good. You know, uh, the, the time that I spent, uh, messing up really, really showed me how good things can be. Right. You know, when you get out of that and you start changing your lifestyle and you start doing other things and doing things that make you happy, mm -hmm. and when you really have hobbies and interests and stuff, it, it it really shows you what you were missing. Yeah, yeah. That's that's uh, that's fantastic. I think that um, you know, usually in in a person's life, there's there's a moment, you know, I've been saying this in our interviews, a moment of clarity. It's, it's kind of like 
when you kind of admit to yourself, you know what, maybe I should change directions a little bit with my life. Can you describe that moment for me when you just kind of went, oh, I think I better do something. You know, it, yeah. I, I, it, so I, I've come to that, I've came, I came to that moment quite a few times mm -hmm. and it, it was never enough to, to make me change. Yeah. Um, so I do remember, I do remember having those moments, um, but there just came a time, uh, you know, I woke up uh, one day and it was just like, I had no idea what I had done the night before. And it, Ooh, it, yeah. it really, um, really changed the way I thought about it. Not that that hadn't happened before, right, right. but just the circumstances of that, of, of where I was and, and, and who I was with, I was just, I was just disgusted with myself and, and uh, I just never wanted to feel that way again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it was that and along with all the other mornings, sure. you know, just this, just that and, and the memory of those other mornings of just, just going, you know, this doesn't need to happen. Right. You know, it's not, right. it's not something that needs to happen. Right. And so with, with that understanding and, and I actually started attending refuge very, um, very close to when that happened. Right. And I, I'd have to credit this fellowship a lot mm. with uh, my sobriety. You know, it's, it's, if it weren't for you guys and, and the service that I've been able to provide for you guys, right. uh, I wouldn't be here. You yeah. know, I wouldn't be here and I, I most certainly wouldn't be sober. Right. And, right. uh, you know, I have to thank you for that. No, you know what? Thank God for it. But I know this. Um, for you, the journey wasn't like an immediate thing, like a flick of a switch on the wall. There was still some back and forth going on inside you. And, uh, and I remember us talking about that. We were talking about everything from weed to drinking to, you know, sex. We, we covered so many different areas in, in philosophically, life speaking, between you and I that, you know, it was uh, kind of interesting because uh, you were in this place and kind of still formulating, uh, kind of marinating on all these things. That's why I love the fact that you said it was a lot of events and you went to one event thinking about what you did the night before and thinking, oh gosh. But it was all those things stacked up that kind of worked to redirect your vision a little bit, didn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, now your mom and dad uh, they've been divorced for a while, haven't they? Yeah, quite some time. So, uh, 23 years now. Yeah, since Steve uh, Pinner and Leslie. Now, does she still have the Pinner last name? Yes. So, yeah. Steve and Leslie Pinner and James Pinner. Yeah. And you are the product of those two, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so, uh, and they're both very committed in their own, you know, not only walk with God, but their sobriety as well. Yeah, I'd have to say so. Yeah. They, um, so it was a pretty good example for you, but it's still, the example wasn't necessarily enough. You had to find your, kind of your own path, didn't you? Yeah, you know, that's the story of my life, really. Is <laughs> you, can, you can be shown other people's mistakes or even told about them and told why they made these mistakes and why you don't want to make these mistakes. But you still, as, as, you, as an individual, you're like, well, I'm not you. Right. You know, that doesn't mean that yeah, exactly. I'm going to make those mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, uh, you know, doing things. I, I remember being so irritated by my dad and, and some of the things that he did. He struggled with addiction his whole life. But uh, when I began to get older, I, I, when I was younger, I used to swear I'll never be like the man. And then as I'm getting older, I realize how much I'm like that man and, and how dangerous uh, it can be to think, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be like that. You know, how you tend to pass things off and see yourself as better than, than maybe you really are. It's kind of a reality check, isn't it? I, I think um, one of the things that comes to mind as I was thinking about you, and I've met Steve and, and met, actually met him first, and uh, he was really praying for you, and we, we were praying for you through the years. It's been five years, as you said now. And um, it was kind of cool. How we met was strictly centered around recovery and integrating the walk with God in the midst of your recovery as they're working their program, um, realizing that just the principles 
were never enough. They needed something more, something more energetic or something that has a vitality to it. And uh, I was reminded of that uh, whole scene in Matthew chapter 9 where Luke, uh, or the Matthew, is at his tax bo- booth. He's collecting taxes in and as I, people come in and out of the city. And what a horrible person Matthew was. You know, he was just a, 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 a nasty guy. He was a total gangster. And, uh, you know, the, the kind of the thing that had to happen because all the other guys were probably thinking a little bit like they were special, Jesus picked them, until he says to Matthew, come follow me. And uh, right on the heels of his invitation to follow, which was a, a, a real rabbinical invitation to study <laughs> as a rabbi. So he's you know, taking a tax collector who's a traitor to his nation, his religion, you know, the whole thing, his heritage. He's against it all, and yet Jesus invites him to come. And through that whole process, I, I learned one fact, and that was that Jesus is more uh, interested in a relationship with us uh, more than uh, if we believe the right things or if we behave in the right way. Whereas most religious people believe that you need to believe the right thing and behave in the right way before you can be actually a follower of Jesus. And Matthew kind of throws that out the window. And so whenever I find myself in a place in life where I'm like overwhelmed at, at my own inadequacy, I, I'm comforted by, by Matthew following Jesus. The other thing is right on the heels of Matthew's rabbinic invitation, he... Um, Matthew throws a party. I'm figuring Matthew threw a party that was like a kegger party of old. He brings all his friends together and he can't believe that this rabbi, this miracle worker had asked him uh, to, to follow. And so he threw him a party. And that's when all the Pharisees were angry at him because he was, had the audacity. It says in, in, in Matthew 9, it says many tax collectors came to him and uh, they were partying and and Jesus wasn't, I'm not saying he was like getting wasted or anything like that, but <laughs> he was at the party and everybody was cool with him. Everybody loved him. Everybody kind of connected with him and he was cool with them. And uh, when he'd heard, as the Pharisees are complaining off in the distance, that you know he's daring to do that, uh, Jesus said, uh, uh, the, the, the well have no need of a physician, but I have come to call the sinners to repentance, and uh, they're sitting right next to him. He said, I came for the sick, you know, <laughs> and um, I think, you know, the beauty of that is that every, while everybody else in a program or trying to get their life together, working so hard to figure it out, um, God wants that relationship with them. He doesn't want them to waste their time trying to get better. He wants them to focus them, their time trying to follow him. So uh, one of the questions I would have for any home fellowship that would be watching this is, um, you know, quit focusing on believing or behaving in the right way and just start following. Because it was kind of interesting. Jesus, by doing that, he was saying to Matthew and everybody around him, I... I'm not looking for you to believe the right things or behave in the right way. What I'm looking for from you is to follow because if I can get you to follow me, you don't have to worry about changing. He says, if you follow me, I will change your life. The Pharisee said, if you change your life, you can follow me, which is the exact opposite. And so the question I would have is, You know, if you're down on yourself, you don't think a lot of yourself, you think about the things that you've done, to know that Jesus is just simply inviting you to follow. Follow just means, like you said, we showed up, we started working and serving together and just talking. And, you know, we didn't try to get you to go through catechism or anything like that. We just talked and we just shared and we've shared each other's lives. And I can tell you I'm so grateful for that. Because rather than focusing on how bad or how good you could be, we were both focusing on how good God is. I want to thank you for sharing, Jake. Man, this has been so 
awesome to be able to have you here. And I hope, I hope that anyone, young or old, that hears this kind of takes your cue, which was follow. Just simply follow and things will change. Stop trying to change, but follow and he will make the change. Amen? Amen, Howard. Thank you, bro. Thanks for having me. God bless you. Just worship Jesus. Let's just give him praise, adoration. Just thank you for all the support, all the prayers to make all of this happen for Tuesday nights, for Sunday nights, for Sunday mornings. Just want to worship him now. The splendor of a king clothed the majesty let all the earth rejoice all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great is our god sing with me how great is our god and all will see how great how great is our god age to And time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God hit three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb, how great our God, sing with me how great is our God, and oh, we'll sing how great, how great is our God, how great is our God, sing with me how great is our God. Though we'll see how great, how great is our God. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. You're the name above all names. You are worthy, you are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great. Is our God, and oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God, how great is our God, see with me how great is our God, and oh, we'll see how great. How great is our God.